Hello and welcome to another episode. Today you might notice that I don't have the iMac here that I usually have in other episodes. Uh, this one here. And the reason is because it was extremely noisy. So the microphone was picking up that noise, it was difficult to fix that after, and I wanted to spend less time uh, in editing the videos. So I decided to replace the internal hard drive, which was an old style hard drive spinning inside, making noise with a SSD one. So let's come with me and let's see how that happened. That's the noise of the hard drive and it's also very slow. In total, it took about two minutes to just boot the operating system. This system also has a partition for macOS 9.2 as well which might make the process of cloning the disk a little bit more challenging. The case is very easy to open, it has just four screws. From this panel here, you can access the memory in case you want to replace it. Here we have a VGA port in case you want to extend the screen to another monitor, and it's in this area that you have the two additional final screws. Here it is, the iMac exposed. Next, we need to remove this metal cage that has six screws. And here we have the motherboard. Let's take a look at it. The design was really beautiful. Here we have the hard drive to be replaced. In order to attach an SSD SATA disk, we need an adapter from IDE to SATA. I got this one from Amazon. Let's see if it works. This is the adapter, I think it will be easy to fit it here, there's plenty of space. Let's remove the hard drive. Before we put the adapter, I want to test it. For that, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi running Linux. In order to test that the IDE to SATA interface that I got on Amazon is working, I'm going to connect the SSD SATA disk to the adapter and then use this IDE to USB adapter to connect it to the Raspberry Pi. Once connected, you might have a message like this saying that the disk was mounted in a directory. For those not knowing what this means, mounting a disk basically means making it available and we will usually find the contents in a directory. The command mount is going to show us all mounted devices. This is the disk we are interested in, and this is the directory it has been mounted. If you are not familiar with the command line interface, I have a couple of videos to help you learning it from zero to hero. Check them out. The command F disk shows the partition table. In this case, the disk has one Windows partition. Let's connect the second disk and take a look. IDE disks have a mechanism to connect multiple devices on a single cable. The primary device was called master and the rest slave devices. These pins determined that priority. In this case, we remove the jumper before connecting it to the adapter. After plugging the power supply, it made a shock noise and it burned. I got this cheap thing on Amazon. Well, fortunately I have a PC power supply. First, I want to check the voltage and if it's working. I don't want to damage this disk. Okay, the power supply doesn't turn on. That's because it's not plugged to a motherboard. We can hack it by using a wire and connect the green cable located at the pin 24 to any black cable corresponding with ground. If you feel unsecure doing this, be careful because you can get an electric shock from the power supply. I have links in the description for IDE to USB adapters that you can get on Amazon. Now we have 5 volts on the red cables and 12 on the yellow ones. We are good to go. After connecting the disk, the red light and the noise makes it clear that the disk is working and the data is being transferred. Checking with the common mount, we see a disk at dev sda5. Now let's unmount the disk. Next, I want to plug the SS disk to the Raspberry Pi as well, so we can start the data transfer. I will use a case like this one that already provides a USB adapter and makes it all easier. Again, we use the mount command. It was mounted at dev sdb1, that's the ssd disk. 
let's unmount it and use the command dd which is a powerful data copying tool used for low level disk operations like creating backups and creating bootable usb drives be very careful here what we are going to do is going to completely erase the data from the ssd disk also not knowing how to use the dd command could be very dangerous because it could delete and erase any other disk on the system so you have been warned we are going to copy bit by bit all the content from the hard drive into the SSD drive, making an exact clone of it. After about 15 minutes, it's all done. The source disk had only a size of 10 gigabytes. Now let's test it and see if it works. We are connecting the disk to the adapter and we need to put the device select jumper into master. Now the memory and now the power supply. The chime is a good sign, and yes, it's working. I think it has been a success. Let's put all this back together. The SSD disk is smaller. It is at 2.5 inches, so I can't screw it here, but it's very light, so this cable tie should do the job and it also matches the color of the iMac. It's already installed and let's turn it on. Like that sound. It boots a lot faster than before. Maybe you don't notice that much now, but it is perfectly silent. So it's also nice to work with it. And I can have it here in the channel, displaying something in the background without affecting the noise. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you are planning to do the same, I think it's quite easy the process, let me know in the comments. And remember that you can have behind the scenes and more information if you subscribe and support the channel through Patreon. Thanks for watching.